Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you in conversation with a well-known man of God, Bishop Eric Ntorin Kansa. Hello, Bishop. Say hello to the viewers. Hello, viewers. I believe you are all doing very well. Let's um, find out a little about Bishop Eric and how he began in the ministry. Bishop, could you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and how you began your Christian ministry? Thank you. I was saved in 1980 and then ordained into ministry in 1985. And since that time, God has led me through different evangelistic ministries, crusades, healing ministries, and church plantings. All this started in Africa, Ghana to be specific. And then the Lord brought us into the United Kingdom as missionaries to evangelize and then plant a church. And we've been in the ministry in the United Kingdom since 1992. That was when the Living Friends Baptist started in Edmonton. So Bishop, it seems that you've led a very interesting and varied life. As this is now the season of festivities, what does the Bible say about Christmas? Thank you again. <laughs> yeah, Christmas is a time that the Saviour was born into the world in a miraculous way. Uh, before Jesus was born, as a matter of fact, according to the Bible, there was no hope for humanity. And God worked it out for his own son to be born so that through him our sins can be forgiven and mankind can start a new relationship with God. Nowadays, lots of people talk about Christianity and talk about the Christian life or walking with Christ. Bishop, can you tell the viewers what does this all mean and why should we pay any attention to it? It's all about Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's about his life. It's about the birth of Christ. It's about the example he came to give mankind so that through him we can get back to God. Christianity is about the death and the resurrection of Christ. Christianity is about reconciling with God. Christianity is about love in demonstration. Because before Jesus Christ came, mankind or humans were living anyhow. You know, we were confused, worshipping and trying to use different mediums to God. So Jesus Christ himself, who was God that came in the flesh, came to show us the way so that by identifying with Christ, you can link up with God the Father. So I see Christianity as a means of redemption, forgiveness, and then hope for the future. I see Christianity as a means of burying yourself in the holiness of God through Christ. And Christianity is also the response to human need. That is the only way we overcome the confusion in whether to worship God through stones or through trees. So when Jesus came, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father unless by me. So Christianity is very important for each one that wants to connect with God. So Bishop, if I want to connect with God and I pray to Jesus Christ for him to become my personal Lord and Savior, what will happen to me? When someone wants to walk with God and the person prays to Jesus Christ, a new life begins. According to the Bible, in John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as believed in him, he gave them power to be called 
children of God. So a new life begins when you are born as a baby in the spirit, the moment you believe. When someone prays the prayer and gives his life to Jesus, it means that a change of position also takes place. Bible says in Colossians, one who accepts Jesus or prays to Jesus to accept him into his life, he is translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, you become a new creation. And whereby through the blood of Jesus, old things passes away and new things begins. One of the things you just mentioned was prayer and praying a prayer. Now many of our viewers may not know what prayer is. What do you think prayer is? Yeah, prayer is communication with God. It's just like a baby. When you pray the prayer and you accept Jesus into your life, then spiritually you are born as a baby. Just like in the natural, when a baby is born, the baby will cry and then look for attention and protection. So spiritually, the way we cry out to the Lord, speak to the Lord, commune with the Lord is prayer. So it's a dialogue whereby God also speaks to us. So prayer is seeking God. Prayer is uh, an act of faith, petitioning with the Lord. Prayer is asking God. Prayer is going to the presence of the Lord to obtain mercy. That is Hebrew 4.16. So what would you say, Bishop, to our viewers who feel uncomfortable praying aloud or praying in public? Yeah, for someone to feel uncomfortable praying aloud and also praying in public, I would say it's not a problem because there are so many ways to pray. You can pray in silence. You can pray out loud. You can even read your prayer. You can even sing your prayer. The important thing is communicating with the Father. So there is nothing like feeling embarrassed or feeling acceptable when you are praying. It's your heart and your spirit coming with the Lord through your physical body. But in life, there is time for everything. With our Lord Jesus Christ himself, when he was about to give his life as a sacrifice for humanity, the Bible says he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and there he prayed with the disciples. But he walked away a few years. He knelt down, he prayed, and the way he prayed was filled with intensity. He prayed out loud. And the Bible says the sweat that came out of his body was like drops of blood. Then also, in the book of Acts, the disciples of Christ, Paul and Silas, they were arrested, put in jail. The Bible says they sang hymns and then prayed, and the jailers heard them. And then on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were gathered together, and then the day that the Holy Spirit came, they prayed out loud. So there is a time for everything. You know, there is a time to pray out silent. There is a time to pray out loud. There is a time to pray singing. There is a time to pray in a meditative way. So there are some congregations like you ask, uh, sometimes when they gather together, like Pentecostals, they pray out loud. Everyone prays. That is the culture of the church. And the Lord works. And some people also gather together and they pray silence. So God listens to them. So nobody is to be condemned and nobody is to be embarrassed, whichever way you want to contact God. But there is something unique about praying out loud. Until you try it out, you will not know the difference. But as a child of God, if you tried different ways of communication, I think it's better. You mentioned that Christians get together and either pray silently or pray out loud according to what they want to do. Yeah. 
Why do Christians get together on Sundays to pray? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, that we should not forsake the assembling of the brethren, as some are in the habit of doing. So, church services is for Christians. Christians go to church. <laughs> so, anyone who becomes a Christian, no matter what, you will go to church. We congregate to celebrate the victory of Jesus for mankind, and we also congregate, uh, meet together as a church to encourage each other. We are living in difficult times. We need encouragement and also to be inspired, to be instructed, to be challenged by the teachings of the gospel and, and also to agree and then pray on different issues. You can pray as a person, but when you meet with others, the intensity is different because there's strength in gatherings. You mentioned that we're living in difficult times, and indeed we are, when you consider recent events. Should people be worried about the state of the world today? Yes, I feel all of us have to be worried. Because though, uh, I am, I, me and yourself, we haven't grown too much. The world has become scary. And everyone is looking for answers. How come all these wickedness and confusion and struggle for power, struggle for territories. It took my mind to one of the scriptures in Matthew chapter 24 regarding the prophecy Jesus gave to us regarding the end times, signs of the end times. So it all falls within the signs. So, and, and so if these signs are manifesting, then it means we have to be ready for the coming of the Lord if these signs are manifested, it means we have to believe and be saved. Because anything can happen. People are dying everywhere. So we have to be worried. This is the time for us to seek God, as a matter of fact, for his protection, for his peace. Christians are always talking about the good news. What is this good news? What's it all about? The good news is about Jesus who did not deserve any punishment, but because of the love of God for us, he was punished for our sake. Therefore, God says, come to him as you are. No matter what you have done, he will forgive you and then make you his child. It's a good news. We were supposed to die, but the Lord made Jesus Christ die for us. It's a good news. We are sick. He became sick so that we can be healed. It's a good news. So the good news is the work Jesus did for us and the benefits we can receive if we believe. That really is good news. I think many of the viewers would like to continue to hear from you, but we're running out of time. But in final, in parting, what would you like to say to the viewers at home? I would say Jesus Christ is the only way for our souls to be saved. As each one prepares for their pension at old age, we need to also prepare for the salvation of our souls. And how can we do it? It's through Jesus. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So I want to encourage each, each one, if you haven't believed in Jesus, today is the day of your salvation. Believe and be saved. Because we don't know the time, we don't know the hour. And then you can also visit us in Living Flames Baptist Church, any of our branches, either in New Cross or Walthamso, or if you travel abroad, we are in East Nigeria, we are also in, in Ghana. You know, pay, pay a visit to any of the churches and I know that your life will never be the same and God will bless you. If you are sick, if you are worried, if you are confused, please call us and we will pray for you. Because Jesus is alive and he is still saving, he is still healing, he is still delivering people, he is still blessing people and protecting his children. And there is nothing he cannot do for us if we can have faith in him. I'm sure, like me, many of the viewers would have loved to continue this conversation, but it's been a real pleasure spending time 
and talking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you know that everything happens for a purpose? But did you also know that God has a divine plan and purpose for you? Why? The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Come and discover your purpose in life at Living Flames Baptist Church, 363 Fullbourne Road, Walthamstow, London, E17 4HL, or our branch at Cotsbrook Street, New Cross, London, SE14 6JB. Telephone 07940-447472 or 07886-533-077. At Living Flames Baptist Church, we know that your life will never be the same again.